Greetings, everybody! Welcome to the Prop Shop. I'm Bill Duran, the prop maker here at Punished Props, and we are kicking off a series today that you guys have been asking me to do for years. That's right, we are going to show you a little bit about how to mold and cast your replica props. As you can see here, I have quite a collection of molds that I've made over the years. Very colorful, lots of different types of molds. Uh, today, we're gonna show you uh, some of the basics and information on silicone because there's a lot of silicone out there. It can be really daunting, so we're gonna break it down for you. Also, in the coming weeks, we'll have more and more videos, both on how to make molds of different types and how to cast pieces out of them. This is kind of a basic intro series to mold making. So those of you who are looking to get into it uh, and have nowhere to start, here's your place to start. Mold making, in a nutshell, is making a negative copy of the thing that you built. For example, this is the Carnifex gun that I made from Mass Effect. This is the master. It's a whole bunch of different materials. The mold is a negative copy of this, just like so. This came out of there, and then when I put the mold together, there's a negative cavity that gets filled with uh, any kind of material that you want. It could be chocolate, I use plastic usually, uh, to make a copy of the master. For most of the mold making I do, I use a flexible uh, silicone rubber for the mold. That's because the positives that I make out of them tend to be a rigid plastic piece. As I said, there are many different types of silicone. It can be extremely daunting when you go to buy a bunch and not only are they pricey, but you don't even know which one to get. So here's a rundown on some of the silicones I like to use. For starters, there are different types of silicone. There is tin cure silicone and platinum cure silicone. There are benefits to either one. For example, tin cure silicone is usually a lot less expensive. However, it tends to have a shorter lifespan and it will dry out uh, over time. And sometimes it can shrink a tiny bit. But it does also have less issues with curing inhibition. On the other hand, platinum cure silicone tends to be a little more expensive, but also tends to live a lot longer. It also has less issues with shrinkage, but has more issues with curing inhibition. For most of what I do, I use tin cure silicones like this guy right here. There are also different shore hardnesses, different levels on the durometer scale. For example, this one is a 15 and it's very sort of wobbly. And this one is more of a 25 or a 30. It's a little bit more structured, a little less bendy. And of course, there are reasons for going one way or the other. For most basic stuff though, something like a 30 right here or this guy, just fine. Now the colors here don't really mean that one is better than the other one. Companies like Smooth On like to use different colors of their silicone just to represent the different products. So here are some examples. The blue stuff here is a tin cure silicone from Tap Plastics called their silicone RTV. Good general purpose stuff, about 25 or 30 on the durometer scale. And uh, I've never had a problem with stuff. Pretty good, I can buy it locally. Similar to that is Mold Max 30, which uh, again, all very similar to the tap stuff. I ordered this from Reynolds Advanced Materials. And again, really good general purpose stuff. If you wanna do brush on molds like this guy here or this guy here, Rebound 25 is your friend. It's a platinum cure silicone, but it has never failed me. And uh, it's super duper durable. Then you have stuff like Mold Star 15, a little bit more flexible. It's platinum cure. Uh, usually use that for special cases. And we have things like this stuff here, which is Mold Star 20T. And that is transparent, kind of, and it cures really, really fast, about half an hour. Most of these other ones take hours to overnight. Now, they all have different durometers, they all have different colors, they have different properties. And they all have different pot lives. Like I said, this only takes half an hour to cure, so you only have about five minutes to mix and pour it on your piece. Some of the other ones are a little more forgiving as they take longer to cure. No matter the silicone you're using, always make sure you read the technical bulletin and the material safety data sheet. This will give you everything you need to know about the pot life, how long it takes to cure, what temperature it likes to cure in, and proper measuring and pouring techniques. Now, I know what a bunch of you are gonna say, Bill, that silicone ain't cheap, pretty expensive. Why don't I just use something like silicone caulking to make my molds? Well, you can do that, you totally can. 
Uh, I've seen some hacks on how to make it a little bit more uh, pliable for applying to your mold. But I will tell you this, silicone caulk is not designed to pull pieces out of it. It's meant to be an adhesive. If you wanna pull like one copy out of a thing, give it a go. That's not how we do things around here. We like to use the genuine article. And trust me, learning how to use these materials properly uh, is gonna help you out in the long run, especially if you start small. Work on projects that require just a little bit of your silicone, learn the basics, and then work your way up. You can even buy some of these smaller trial size kits. They're a lot cheaper because you get less of it. And this is enough silicone here to knock out half a dozen smaller molds and really learn how the material works. So how does all of this stuff work? There's a lot, you got all your materials, you got your pieces, how's it go along? Well, here is the general gist of the process. First, you measure off the material you're going to use into a couple of cups. All of these silicones have two parts and they either get measured out by weight or by volume in different ratios. A lot of the easier stuff is just one to one by volume, super easy. Then you mix the two halves of them together thoroughly. Usually it pays to mix it up in one cup, pour it all over into another cup and then mix it again, just to make sure this really thick material gets integrated consistently. Then you may notice your silicone has a bunch of bubbles in it and that is not ideal. Now if you're just getting started you can do what's called the bombs away method and pour your silicone from really high and as that strand of material drops bubbles will pop out of it as it goes. This isn't the best method but it is the cheapest method compared to getting a degassing chamber. Now I'll link one of those down in the description if you want to go invest in one yourself. If you make a lot of silicone molds, it really pays to having a degassing chamber. I've got one, it's super duper handy. You mix up your silicone, you chuck it in that degassing chamber, it sucks the air out, sucks all the bubbles out, and then when you pour it into your uh, mold box, your silicone has no bubbles in it and that will help you so much going forward. And there you go, that's the gist of it. Like I said, we're just getting you started giving you an introduction to all of this wonderful material. Now you know a little bit more about going into buying some silicone for yourself, getting ready for more mold making. As always, the tools and materials I mentioned are all listed down in the description below if you wanna grab them yourself and get ready to make some cool molds. You'll wanna stay tuned as well because next week we're gonna start talking about the materials that we pour into these silicone molds urethane resin. And of course, after that, we'll get down into the nuts and bolts of building mold boxes, pouring the silicone, making one and two part molds, making uh, brush on molds. We've got a whole bunch of uh, mold making and casting videos lined up for you guys in the coming weeks. Of course, if you're new to the channel, thank you. Welcome aboard. Make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss those videos that are coming up. We have a whole bunch of other mold making videos just sort of general purpose stuff for projects we worked on in the past. If you haven't had a chance to check those guys out, head on over there, they're linked for you right there. Go ahead and check them out. Thanks again for watching everybody. Now you go on out there and make something. I'll wait here, it's fine.